to the Total Confidence Podcast. I'm your host, the Wild Wazir. Happy to be here with you. Uh, this is going to be the conclusion of a three-part series I've been doing on the three centers of intelligence. Uh, we did the heart types first on an episode called The Heart. We did the head types on an episode called Thought for Food. And this one is going to be the body types on this episode, which is titled Excuse My Language. Now, before I get into the main course of the show, I got to always be honest. I kind of want to bring y'all in on my state of mind. You know, I battle imposter syndrome like almost every day. You know, like I have to go to war with my own insecurities, with my own fear every day, right? So... I've been doing these promotional videos on TikTok and on Facebook. And while the numbers aren't astronomical, they're a lot better than what I thought they would be. The, it's been a, a much better received than I thought it would be. So I'm very surprised at that. But why the, why the, I'm not going to unnecessarily curse. I'm going to try not to curse too much on here, but I got to be my genuine self. But why do I doubt myself so much? You know, I got to go and explore. Now, I've done some work as far as just going back and exploring those things. I've done auditing um, with di- when I studied Dianetics. So most of these things are childhood wounds, <laughs> as you know. And so we're programmed to doubt ourselves and all of that. But it's just like I have never not been successful at something that I set my mind to. The only person who has stopped me is me, my own doubt, my own overthinking and all of that. So I got to stop that or I just got to keep pushing through. I don't know. I I, I keep doing this to myself. It's it's torturous. So anyway, today should be fun because we're going to talk about the body centers, the type eights, the type nines and the type ones. And what's going to make this fun is I have people of all three that are, you know, good friends of mine. And so I've been able, and I want to thank my friends uh, and co-workers who, and family who have allowed me to put them on the Petri dish <laughs> as I've got back into the Enneagram and, refi- you know, refining my, my uh, ability to coach and my ability to identify uh, certain characteristics. So I want to thank y'all so much. All right, so look, we're going to get into it. Eight nines and ones are the body center they're called the body center or the instinctual center the body center relates to movement action gut instinct and physical sensations in the body it is concerned with motion vitality and the act of doing the body center receives instinctual energy from the gut which creates what feels like convictions that must be acted on uh before i go into that again i want to thank Gina Gomez, the author of The Enneagram and You. And for this particular series, I have been using this book as an outline, kind of a springboard. So I want to thank her. And again, it would be great to get you on the show. Uh, We should reach out shortly. And let's see. You know, it'd be an honor to have you on. So, you know, the eight, nines, and ones, the instinctual center. You know, these people can feel, they get a feeling from people. You know, my good friend, I call him my friend, but it's my brother. My brother, Jamil, he owned his own taxi company for years, you know, before Uber and Lyft and all those came and basically destroyed the taxi cab industry. Um, But he ran a successful taxi business for years. And one of the things he used to say um, was when somebody got in the car that he felt like they weren't going to pay him (laughs) he could feel it (laughs) not only could he feel it it was like wolverine on x-men he said he could smell it (laughs) he said they had a certain smell to them (laughs) you know and so um that instinctual intelligence you know and again in, in the west we talk so much about intellectual intelligence and now the trend is emotional intelligence but rarely do we talk about instinctual intelligence. You know, that's a form of intelligence too that you can read people. You know, another brother I work with, 
good co-workers of type 9. And I spoke about this um, maybe last episode or the episode before that. I remember we had a new person come. And I was excited about this new person um, coming. And so I, I met the new person. And so I went to my type 9 colleague. And I said, hey, man, you need to go meet this person because they blah, 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 blah. He was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> he just looked at me, you know. And so finally when it came to be that this person really was not who they presented themselves to be, he was just like, dude, I told you. <laughs> he said, I just could feel it. He said, this, this guy's vibe is off. Now, it might sound like they're just saying that, but no, this is a form of intelligence, you know, just like we have head intelligence or intellectual intelligence. We have heart intelligence or emotional intelligence. They got instinctual intelligence, body intelligence, gut feelings. Something just don't feel right. It don't mean that it's always what they think. It's not infallible. Neither is intellectual intelligence or heart intelligence. But what it does mean is they can sense things. They can feel things. Got another friend who's a type one colleague. She just... She don't fool with everybody. She just don't, some people she just don't rock with. You know, me, um, I want to see the good in everybody and I just believe everybody bullshit off the gate. You know what I'm saying? And, and But these body types, they just feel something with people. And sometimes I rely on them to kind of reel me in, you know, because I just believe everybody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, that's a form of intelligence, that gut intelligence. You know, and again, the best example, like Wolverine, you know, he could smell that. He could feel that. You know, it's a form of intelligence. The common thread between type 8s, 9s, and 1s is their desire for respect, comfort, and most importantly, control. And they all seek control in their own ways. The type 8 seeks control by... You know, they by their environment, they make themselves big. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily physically big, but just this big energy. They walk into the room and they size everybody up. Not like they want to fight, but it's just this automatic thing that just the power dynamic. They walk in and, and who's the alpha in here? You know, where's the power in here? Okay. And they size people up. The type eights even test people sometimes, you know. <laughs> you know, especially the more average to unhealthy type eights. You know, I've had um, different people in leadership over the years who have been type eights, and they come across with the, you know, the hard iron fist thing, which triggers something in me because I don't like bullies. <laughs> and so, if you remember the type five in security, we go to a type eight. So once you push me to a certain point, we can match energy. And a lot of times I've become friends with these eights because they've come with that whole <laughs> iron fist thing. And they see me, Mr. Nerdy, with the glasses and all that. And then they see this this guy just kind of match energy and meet them right there. And it's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. So that's that's uh, the type eights. The type nines, they seek control in a different way. The type nines remind me of the Bible. When Jesus said, if a man makes you walk a mile with him, then walk a second mile with him. <laughs> he said, if they take your shirt, man, they give them your, your, your uh, coat too, <laughs> you know. But they use the strategy of just kind of going along, going with the flow until they no longer want to go with the flow and then they can get very stubborn and very resistant, very passive aggressive sometimes. You know, I remember um, I had a coworker that was a type nine and he called me one day. He was kind of new and he did, did something that was a little crazy. And so he was afraid of the consequences. And I said, man, I'm going to cuss you out when I see you again. Right. And I said, man, give me a call tomorrow, man. I'm just joking, though, right? Man, that man ain't called me for a week because the way I came at him rubbed him the wrong way. But instead of him saying, hey, man, it rubbed me the wrong way, a nine will just, they'll just phase you out. They'll just ignore you just straight up and down. Same colleague that I was talking about earlier that felt something from that person. I remember somebody was on his ass one day, right? They were just giving him, I work for a light rail system, and so we have people who, 
give directions to the trains. We have people who give, you know, instructions to the supervisors and things of that nature. So uh, somebody was giving him instructions, but they were really like being super over the top and extra, right? And so after a while, he just started ignoring them. <laughs> you know, and I was laughing because I was listening to it. And because of my knowledge of the Enneagram, I knew exactly what was happening. That type nine all of a sudden just becomes like a rock, you know, the, the passive, uh, you know, easy to get along with person, you know, sometimes people get that twisted and think they're soft. It ain't necessarily that they're soft, but they can just become real stubborn and get real, just like, a, you know, like a boulder. It reminds me of the, uh, the X-Man Colossus. You know, he just becomes this iron solid thing. That's what the type nine could do. And every now and then, too, you push them too far, they go spaz on you. And then they just kind of get it together and go back to their normal baseline behavior. Type ones, they seek control in a different way. Type ones, they want to be compliant with what's right. You know, they want to do the right thing. They want to be prepared. You know, they want to be efficient. You know, I got a colleague that's a type one, and she her famous thing is, if you stay ready, you ain't got to worry about getting ready. <laughs> she's always prepared, you know. She's always needs to know what the rules are so that I'm in on the right side of it. She's always cautious to make sure that she's on the right side of the way things are supposed to be because she don't want to be left out there and ridiculed and lambasted. You know, type ones have this loud, what they call inner critic. We all have this inner critic and we hear it in our voice today, you know, in our head. Hey man, why you do this? Hey, what'd you do that for? You shouldn't have did that. But the type nines is very loud. I'm mean, sorry. The type ones is very loud, very harsh. And so sometimes they are really hard on themselves. You know, did you, were you offended by this? You know, did I do the wrong thing? Did I do the right thing? You know, and so they seek control by being efficient and also just by making sure that they're prepared for and they, they know what's going on and they're on the right side of the right and wrong of a situation. OK, so these are the three body types. I think we'll start with the type one, you know, and I got some examples of type ones. Uh, co-workers of the type ones and it's been fun to learn this you know because the thing about this is y'all when you learn this and it's not like you know you just stop learning it's so much to learn but it just gives you compassion for yourself the main thing is to learn your type and have compassion for yourself and then it gives you compassion for others because these behaviors are like defenses you know so anyway type one called the reformer Key desires, ones want to be virtuous, ideals driven, and accurate, and do things the way they believe they should be done. They want to be the example, you know? They are very proud, especially in a professional environment, of doing the right thing, upholding the right thing, championing, champion, championing, doing the right thing. I think I said that right. The key fears, ones fear being bad, wrong. Or corrupt or being condemned for doing something wrong. Now, sometimes the one's uh, concept of wrong varies, okay? They have their own principles sometimes. And I read one time they even have what's called a trap door. Well, the type one can be very rigid and want to do right. And, you know, one of my uh, type one colleagues, you know, people call her the goody two shoes. But the type ones can, they allow themselves to sometimes deviate from that. It was called, I read before, called a trap door. They, they give themselves an out to kind of where it's not really considered being bad, you know. Um, but, you know, it's, they allow themselves to break out of that. So, core values, honesty, having principles, humility, good manners. They hold on to their beliefs cleanliness and tidiness and fairness you know again ones they want to be seen as good people that's very important to them you know and or i'm setting the example of 
being, you know, of good behavior, of what's right and what's appropriate. The strengths of the type ones, the truthful, ethical, responsible, purposeful, organized, hardworking, and practical. Again, going back to one of my colleagues who's a type one, she's uh, very responsible. Even as a very young woman in her early 20s, we would have these uh, split shifts and we had a lot of downtime. And so I remember one time calling her. I said, what you doing? She said, oh, I'm working on my will. <laughs> you know, she had a house in her early 20s, you know, sacrificing, you know, to having her family in a situation where most young people weren't thinking like that. But very responsible, purposeful, you know, she's recently gone back to school. That was something that she always wanted to do. And she went back. And she's graduating, and she's very excited about that. She, uh, and again, purposeful. You know, hey, I want to do this. I want to accomplish this. They can set their mind to it, and they can be very good. They're organized. You know, hardworking. Yeah, they're gonna make sure that things get done right. That's the way they want to do. It. They don't like to do things half-ass. You know, challenges for type ones. They can be inflexible. You know, they can see things their way. And kind of be closed off sometimes to other points of view, you know, that black or white thinking, you know, perfectionistic. Yeah, doing things because I want to do things, quote unquote, right. So I don't want to present anything that's not right. So sometimes that delays a simple task for them. Overly critical. First of all, they're overly critical of themselves because of that loud inner critic. But then secondly, they can be overcritical of other people, but they're projecting a lot of times how critical they are of themselves. Okay. They repress anger. Now, what's interesting about the type one, and I learned this, um, one of the things they do to repress anger is called reaction formation. <laughs> okay. So let me explain in simple terms what reaction formation is. The type one might be upset. OK, but being upset in their inner critic is bad. You can't show people that you're upset because that's not what a good person does. So what a type one would do is they will do the exact opposite. So, again, I got a colleague. She's a type one. She could be pissed off and, oh, no, everything's good. Hey, she could be smiling. The body and the, the uh, <laughs> reaction, they're really upset, but to offset that making them appear to be a bad person in their own mind, they could be smiling and laughing, but they're steaming inside, <laughs> repressing that anger. They could be impatient, resentful, um, and, and resentful, especially for people who don't do what they perceive is the right thing. People who take shortcuts, you know, um, they don't want to accept their own flaws. And the reason why is they're really hard on themselves. It's really, I got this loud inner critic and it's just, judging every single thing that I do, I don't need you to tell me what I, you know, and, and that's very hard for them, you know. So these things, once we learn these things, you're not badges of honor. You know, I recommend people go to therapy. You know, I'm a big proponent of that. Um, and whatever that therapy looks like, cognitive behavior therapy, hell, Dianetics, whatever, the, whatever works, man. I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not here pushing no dogma. Like, whatever... The hell works for you. You know what I'm saying? But we all wounded. We all damaged. So, you know, you take your car to the shop to get service, but you won't take your mind to get serviced. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? You, you know what I'm saying? So, don't be... I mean, I guess the stigma is falling off of therapy now. You know, it's more popular now. So, anyway, um, insecurity. Again, we talked about each type when they're in a place of security, they take on the characteristics of another type. And when they're in times of stress, they can take on the characteristics of another type. So with the type ones in security, they move to the healthy characteristics of the type sevens. When they become relaxed, spontaneous, and playful, and less critical of themselves and others. And again, I've seen my colleague, who's very rigid at times, very hard on herself, just relax have fun, you know, just say things that she would not like normally say because they won't be considered good in the eyes of people. But when she's around the people that she's comfortable with, then she can 
relax and let her hair down and just be herself, you know. Don't necessarily have to say the quote unquote politically correct right thing, but could, you know, really have the sense of humor like a seven. It can be spontaneous and you know, and so it's it's something to behold. Under stress, ones move to the average to unhealthy characteristics of fours. They can become irrational, moody, and depressed. And again, one of the things I've seen and observed in my type one colleagues, uh, when they are stressed out, they shut down, disappear, ghosts, gone, moody. But I'm 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 not going to be around on the scene. I'm going to kind of stew like the type fours can do, you know. And so it's just interesting, man, because we're not one dimensional. You know, we have these different uh, ways of approaching stress and security. Blind spots for the type one, ones can have impossible high, impossibly high standards. They transfer their frustration and disappointment to those around them and are unaware of how their anger presents themselves, presents itself in their body language. Yeah, sometimes it's something to see that anger that they repress in their body. So it could be this rigidness, this stiffness, you know, because the body, there's a book called The Body Keeps Score, you know, anger and pain and all of these things are stored in the body, you know, and manifest in different ways, sometimes in illness, you know. So the type ones in love, ones could be, uh, their needs, they could be extremely self-critical because of this, they need people in their lives who are kind, patient, and compassionate. Yeah, because they're really hard on themselves. So just being there, just accepting them for who they are, you know, just reinforcing, hey, you know, you're a good person, you know, because they're hard on themselves. And they also mesh well with people who value integrity and respect in all of its forms. Yeah, they want people with principles, you know. They want people that work hard like they work. They don't necessarily gravitate towards the people who are looking for shortcuts and the people that are trying to get over on people, how to love them, acknowledge ones for all their hard work and the way they are ardently committed to doing the right thing. They feel love when their dedication to projects, work and self-development is acknowledged. Yeah, I've seen this. Um, one of my colleagues recently had a project that she did um, and she put it together and it was really good, you know, and she felt good to do it, you know, just the joy of doing it and just being acknowledged and being recognized for that. What to be grateful for, ones are very committed to their loved ones and the relationship. They want to make sure they're doing the right, they make sure they're doing right by them and that they're living up to their own high standards of what they believe to be, is a good partner. And again, their orientation is, I want to be a good person. I want to do the right thing. That doesn't mean that they don't fall short. You know, they're human. But what it does mean is, you know, they at least in principle want to be seen trying. So we'll move on to the type nines. I'm going to save eights for last because I probably got the most to say for all type eights. Type nine is called the mediator. And I got a lot of type nines, you know, in my life, my good friend who passed away, may Allah be pleased, Eldon, last year. It's a type nine, just a good guy. And we'll go, I might speak more on him as we go into this. Key desires of the type nine, nines desire inner peace and stability. Nines are very low maintenance when it comes to, they don't need a lot of drama. <laughs> you know, they just kind of want things to be easy. Um, they want to be comfortable. They, you know, like, they don't really like a lot of, like, <laughs> unnecessary, loud, over-the-top, you know, attention-seeking and all that. That just kind of turns them off. Their key desire, again, inner peace and stability, you know. Nines are routine people. They like to do certain things, you know. Um, they, they, are, they like, okay, I'm going to eat here, you know what I'm saying. They kind of do some of the similar things and patterns. A lot of the ones, not all of them. All the nine, excuse me. Key fears, nines fear conflict and both inner and outer chaos. So the type nine, again, it's not that they're uh, cowards, you know what I'm saying? Don't get it twisted. It's just that their wiring is not made for a lot of conflict. 
So they'll either go along with some stuff or they'll just kind of check out. You know what I'm saying? They'll be there and they're nodding with you. The funny thing about a type nine is sometimes you think they're like agreeing with you <laughs> and they're agreeing with you just for the sake of their wiring to keep peace. But really they're just kind of like, eh, no, I ain't think about that shit he talking, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But just their wiring is just like, they don't want to conflict. They don't want chaos. So they'll just kind of nod or whatever. And then they do their own thing, you know? <laughs> so, um, they can reject you passive aggressively, you know, so core values, peace of mind, creativity, empathy, kindness, and generosity, companionship, acceptance, and relaxation. Now, I love to relax. You know, they love to be comfortable. You know, I mean, we all do. But nines, you know, a lot of them have their favorite chairs or their favorite blanket. They have something that's theirs that's, that's, that's comfortable. And they like to make themselves comfortable wherever they are. You know, empathy. Man, the type nines, most of the type nines I know are just great listeners. You know, they can just be there and receive people. They can hold, as they say, uh, hold the space for people. Very, very good at that. The ones that I know, you know. Acceptance. Yeah, accepting people for who they are. You know, cool. You That's who you are. That's what you're about. Cool. You know, uh, companionship. You know, yeah. Like, they're, the way they're wiring it is, it's kind of like, they'll let you talk about you. You know, you have to make them talk about themselves. Again, my good friend, Eldon, uh, he wouldn't talk about himself. He would, We would always talk. And then, I said, man, what's going on with you? And he just deflect and go right back to me. <laughs> you know? Because um, sometimes they don't feel that people will care. You know? It's not important. I'm nobody special. You know? But they are special. You know? And some of the best people I know are type nines. So, their strengths, patience. They can be optimistic. Easy going. Agreeable understanding, genuine and supportive. And most of these speak for themselves, man. You know, nines can meet you where you are. You know, they can, and a lot of times, again, you know, you kind of have to nudge them to talk about themselves, but they're, oh, man, they're so good, man. They're really good at encouraging people. Challenges for type nines, they can be stagnant. Yeah, like a lot of nines, they talk about what they want to do. And they've been talking about it for the longest time. Hey, man, you know, I want to go back to school. Hey, man, I want to do this. But you don't see any emotion towards it. They're just saying it, you know. And it's, all of us are guilty of this at times. But the type nine, you know, I see that a lot in my type nine friends. They have great talents and skills, but it takes them a long time to really dig their heels in and explore the things they want to do. Too conciliatory. Yeah, they can kind of go along and kind of check out without, you know, wanting conflict. Then they just kind of, you know what, I ain't even going to say nothing. You know, passive aggressive. <laughs> Man, that passive aggressive thing is something else. Because, again, they'll just ignore you. They'll just check out, you know. <laughs> they'll say, hey, man, yeah, I'll meet you there. And they don't want to do it. They just, they don't show up, <laughs> you know. Conflict avoidant. Conflict is a part of life, you know. And I know we're socialized to believe that, uh, you know, conflict is bad a lot of times. And uh, But conflict is good, you know. You don't really get progress without conflict, you know. They can be stubborn. Oh, man, yeah. You know, nines, they don't really want to break their routine. They don't want to really do anything outside of what they're comfortable being. So try to make them step out of their comfort level and, you know, They'll just dig their heels in and just kind of freeze up on you. Uh, indecisive and averse to change. And again, like I said, they like they love their routine. They want to keep things easy and predictable. And I don't need a lot of drama. <laughs> so they can kind of, you know, anything done to the extreme is, um, is never good. Again, we're not all one type. I'm sorry, we're all one type, but we take on the characteristics of different types at different times and times of security the type nine moves to the healthy characteristics of the type threes where they're self-assured highly efficient focused and energetic and that was my friend eldon he was all three you know just always helpful always efficient very smart you know 
and would do anything for anybody. So definitely, they, I, I've seen that in action. Uh, under stress, nines move toward the average to unhealthy characteristics of sixes. They can become anxious, self-doubting, and pessimistic. I've seen that as well. You know, got a friend that's a type nine was going through some really, really severe family problems, and you know, he was just really self-doubting, and and you know, now he's much better and he's doing doing well and has been blessed to move on. But when he was in the midst of that situation, I just saw that you know self-doubting just kind of uh ruminating so you know um so yeah that's the type nine understands the stress uh blind spots for the type nine type nines have trouble <clears throat> excuse me type nines have trouble identifying conflict and situations that need to be addressed they will try to minimize the issues and avoid getting upset but in doing so they're continuing to repress their anger and desires yeah, man, that stuff got to go somewhere. So you're just pressing that shit down, pressing it down. <laughs> you know, it's like a volcano. You know, it's just getting hotter and hotter. And at some point, you're going to erupt, you know. So because they don't like conflict, there's not a healthy release valve for all of that anger. Because, again, type 8s, 9s, and 1s also are called the anger types. They all deal with anger, and they deal with anger in different ways, you know. They need to build their self-awareness and begin to accept that conflict is a part of life. It doesn't have to be frightening, and it can even be beneficial to their overall mission of wanting to have peace. Yeah, conflict is, you know, I won't go too deep into this, but, you know, if you're a religious person, you know, the New Testament, most of those letters of Paul, the epistles of Paul were based on conflict in the church. <laughs> you know, they were having problems. You know, a lot of the revelations in the Holy Quran. Or based on problems and situations that were going on at that time. So problems are an opportunity for progress, you know. So type nines in love needs nines value equanimity. They want a partner who is going to be accepting, loving, and compassionate. They do well with someone who can encourage them and not pressure them. They need a good amount of affirming and a partner who allows them to feel safe. When they need to stand up for themselves. Yeah. And I don't need somebody to cuss them out. Hey, man, why are you always? Nah, I mean, you know, we all need encouragement and we all speak different languages. And sometimes it can be counterproductive if we're speaking to somebody. If, you, if you're plugging an iPhone charger into a Galaxy, you might be well-intentioned, but you're going to mess that charger up, the phone up, or both up. And that's in our communication sometimes. We're trying to plug in the way we communicate into a person that it it don't necessarily uh, translate well. You know, nine, you can't, you know, they want to be gently encouraged, but not pressed, you know. So how to love them, nine spend a great deal of time focusing on others. Yeah, they, hey, listen, they still have a need that's there, even though they press it down, they still want to be recognized, you know. So sometimes you have to help your type nine friends because they're going to talk about you. They're happy to let you make both small decisions, such as picking where you're going to eat or choosing a movie you're going to watch, and large decisions as well. One of the best ways to love them is to switch the focus on them, but don't force it. Yeah, you got to ease people into that because that's their wiring. They feel like if I take charge of the situation, then it's going to disturb the harmony between me and you. And they don't want that. It will get easier over time for them to realize that you truly do care and value their opinion. And you know what? And I think about my colleague that's a type 9. And I love talking to him. And he's very, very smart. And I think he values just the fact of that he can feel safe to listen. He can show up without being judged. You know? Very, very smart guy. You know? What to be grateful for. Nines have incredible patience. Oh, man. Understanding, understanding for everyone. But when it comes to those they love and respect, it goes above and beyond. Yeah. Man, they're there for you. You know, they are beautiful souls who are truly aiming to please and adapt to their partners. It is crucial to not walk all over them or take advantage of their mild man of spirit. They're incredibly empathetic and deserving of the same love they give. Yeah. You feel supported by these nines, man. You feel, you know, and we have to help them. When we love somebody, we see their blind spots. And we can help them, you know, and that's the beauty of it. So, um, and I, I'm thankful 
for the people in my life that are, again, kind of in my laboratory as I refine these things. So um, we'll go to the type eight. Last but definitely not least, type eight. I have a close connection to the type eight, number one, because in security, the type five goes to the eight. So I can relate to a lot of this stuff, especially now, later in life. Um, and I got a lot of friends of the type eights. The type eight is called the protector. He desires eights want to be self-reliant and able to control their situation. You know, eights like to be independent. You know, you see Dame Dash, you know, 50 Cent, even uh, former President Trump. You know, they like to be independent. They like to have their own thing. They make their own mark on things. Uh, key fears, eights fear being harmed, controlled, or manipulated by others. Yeah. You know, again, with the type eight, sometimes the best defense is a good offense. You know, I'm going to hit you first. Not necessarily physically, but I'm not going to let you. I'm going to size you up and I'm going to avoid situations that I can't control. You know, and I'm definitely not going to let people manipulate me because that's going to make me feel bad, too. So eights have become very good at reading people, reading people's energy, you know, Um their core values, respect, directness. Man, the directness can be, their bluntness can sometimes be offensive to people. And they don't mean anything by it a lot of times. And they look at you like, damn, you can't take it? And then some eights will test you. They'll be direct and blunt, and they'll watch your reaction. And if you fold, they lose respect for you immediately. But if you can stand your ground and, you know, sometimes they'll be playful. They'll poke at you. And if you can you know, vo uh, what's it called? Uh, volley it back. <laughs> volley and serve it back to them. They gain respect for you. Oh, you stand up for yourself. Okay, this is a person I can trust. You know, <laughs> that's the way they test people. Courage. You know, the character, uh, Kevin Spacey's character, House of Cards. Uh, you know, my brother Jamil, that's one of his favorite. It's probably his favorite show, and he put me on to it. And I believe the, the character, uh, Frank Underwood, is an eight. And he's always talking about, where's your courage? <laughs> he lacked the courage to face me himself. He's always talking about courage. Boldness. Yeah. You know, eights are like, look at me. You know, man, my, listen, my brother Jamil's rap name, he's, he's an artist. And his rap name is Islam Rap God. You don't get more bold than that. <laughs> you know? That's the, that's the eight. It's like, hey, look at me. Deal with me. I'm here. I'm present. I'm standing up. You know what I'm saying? Love and passion. And that's something that gets overlooked. Eights have big hearts. You know? And when you get past the, the hard shell and, you know, them expanding and making themselves larger than life, man, you have some really kind-hearted people. You know? Championing for others. Protecting self and others. You know? And... Because me being a type five, you know, I, I've been passive a lot throughout my life. I'm not so much passive anymore. You know, I, I still let some stuff go, but I'm tolerant, but I'm not as passive as I once was. But the eights around me would protect me, you know, as best they could. You know, when I was depressed and, and wounded, you know, um, they championed the cause of others. Dr. King was a, was a type eight, you know. Champion the cause of justice. Eights are fixated on justice. You know. So the strengths of type eights, they are assertive. They take charge. You know. One thing, and again, my brother Jamil, he, his favorite quote is, oh, we're going to do that shit. You know, like he's assertive. He's If he wants to do something, he's going to do it. <laughs> you know. It's not a whole lot of talk. It doesn't take a whole lot of prep. You know, uh, my, my, my good friend, my brother Jason. You know, these are not my physical brothers. These are my spiritual brothers. Again, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going here. This is what I'm going to do. They make plans, and they make that shit happen, you know. Protective. Very protective of the people they love, you know. It's an instinct. I remember Jason and I were at this uh, restaurant. He came to town, and we went to this pizza place a couple of years ago. And this guy came up to the table and he was just moving real funny you know i think he worked there or something but he looked like kind of uh like he was a drug addict or something you know or just had some mental issues and he just walked up to the table and just kind of bumped the table 
and just looked at us. And Jason looked at me because Jason is very has a lot of uh, done a lot of inner work, and so he looks more like a two. But them damn eight instinct kicked in. He looked at me like he was gonna cut that dude damn head off, and he looked at me like, "Ma, what's what's, what's up with this?" Like. I'm not reading the situation, so he's looking at me to read the situation so we can respond accordingly. And I said, oh, there you go. That's that eight in you now. Okay. <laughs> like Wolverine, them damn claws came out, you know. So they're protective. He went immediately in a protective mode, protecting himself and, and, and all those around him. Independent leadership. Man, eights, yeah, they, they take charge. And I hear some of the eights say on these seminars, they don't necessarily want to take charge. But if there's a void and people just sitting around looking at their feet, you know, it's like, okay, shit. Well, I'm, I'm a, let's make something happen, man. We ain't got time for this, you know. <laughs> um, influential, yeah. They love to, you know, help other people. They love to be catalysts, you know. I, as a colleague at work, he loves to empower people and groom them for leadership. He just feels good at doing that. They can be very generous, you know. And have a lot of vitality, a lot of energy, that life force. You know, they're moving in the direction of their goals, things they want to do, things they want to accomplish, you know. Uh, the challenges for the type A is vulnerability. When you fear being controlled, then there's a protective wall up. And it's hard to be vulnerable um, if you fear being controlled. So that's a challenge sometimes for them to let their guard down. Again, controlling, quick to anger. <laughs> um, yeah, I read where they say eights have access to anger, and unlike somebody like me, I'm I can be steaming for days. No, they just get angry, and then it, it, once the moment's over, the moment's over. You know, me, I, it's a little different for me. You know, uh, intimidating. Yeah, their directness sometimes, um, just their energy, their presence. You know, this like look at me. You know, here I am, you know, it's just, it can be intimidating to people. Confrontational. A lot of eights say what's on their mind and people take it the wrong way. Or, I mean, sometimes if the eight is unhealthy, they can be, you know, a little over the top with it. But again, I have learned to respect people. I'd rather you be honest with me than if, you know, passively, passive aggressively disagree with me, you know, so I've I learned to respect that. They can be, uh, um, they can have a lot of excessiveness. You know, eights like to do, when they do something, they do it. They can sometimes go all out. You know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good. And they can be dominating. Again, that control issue, you know. Um, we don't all stay. We, well, we, let me say this. We all have our core types, like I said, but we take on the characteristics in different situations of other types. In security, eights move toward the healthy characteristics of twos, where they become compassionate, vulnerable, and sincere. And I see this a lot with my friend Jason. He's very compassionate, you know, loves to talk about, you know, just personal development and growth and things he's going through, and very sincere, you know. Um, I visited him a few months ago, and just talking to him, you know what I mean, you can just see in his face he just enjoys people. You know what I mean? Like being present with his friends, his family. Like he's all about that. And it's sincere. Um, I remember Jamil seeing him as a father. You know, he's a father of twin girls. And, you know, that side of him of, you know, being protective of his daughters, man, it's, it's something to watch. You know, it's that, that's that two space, that nurturing side of the type eights. Under stress, eights move towards the average to unhealthy characteristics of fives, and it can become cynical, fearful, and isolated. Yeah, so the type eights, a lot of times, when they're not doing too well, like fives, they'll just withdraw. You know, they're not going to be out, if, if somebody's struggling with vulnerability, and they wounded, and you ain't going to see them out and about, they just kind of go and repair their wounds, lick their wounds, get it, get it together. You know, it usually doesn't last long for them, you know, but yeah, they can go to the low side of the type five, definitely, and um, isolate themselves, fear that they won't be able to take over their situation or if, if they fail, and until they are doing better. Blind spots for the type eights. Eights don't realize how strong and intimidating their energy and presence can be. 
they are so focused on the result they are trying to achieve that they dismiss others in the interim or make them feel as though their personal space is being invaded. During this time, eights are unaware of how their behavior is affecting others. Yeah, I mean, they just feel like they're being themselves. Like, why are y'all tripping? I, it's a Facebook group that is type eights, and I just trip off the ad Instagram, you know, and some of their, their ways, you know. Hey, man, we're direct. Like, what's, what's wrong with you? You know, it could be a blind spot. Sometimes we don't know how we affect other people. Again, most of us are socialized through public schools to just be passive and to be polite, and we're socialized through church to, you know, turn the other cheek and all that. So when you see somebody that seems a little brash, it could be intimidating, you know. But, again, it's a blind spot. They're just thinking, man, I'm, I'm communicating. Like, what's, what's, what's wrong with you? Why are y'all so weak? <laughs> Where's your courage? Uh, eights in love. Needs. Eights value strength. They want a partner who is going to be there through thick and thin, who knows how to get things done with little to no direction. Yeah. Eights, they're in action. Uh, my, 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 my brother Jason always says it's fire ready aim <laughs> you know they're gonna jump it out there and then they'll figure it out you know so they want somebody that's uh going to be there with them you know during the tough times they're very big on loyalty you know uh because if i trust you to bring you into my life and be vulnerable i expect you to be there now when we split apart you know you're you, you're a threat to me you know it might not be a conscious thing but it's definitely a subconscious thing they feel best with someone who can stand up for themselves and for them. They need to know that they can trust and rely on their partner. Yeah, they they, they respect people with some backbone. They don't they don't like cowards, you know. Um, they want you to even stand up to them, you know, when they're wrong, you know, in a respectful way. How to love them. Type eights appear to be the pillars of strength, and for the most part, it's true. However, deep down, they do have a tender heart. This is so true. Um, to truly love them, it's important that their partners not just acknowledge and respect their exterior, but value and get to know and understand what's underneath eight layers. They want to share their heart with someone who they can trust, who can handle it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a protection. The whole toughness, the whole... You know, getting big and expensive. That's, that's a defense. Most of these things, again, come from childhood. Some of them, some people think it's prenatal. What, regardless of what, it's early life things that, you know, but it's not the essence of the core of who we are. What to be grateful for? Eights will give their loved ones their loyalty, their trust, and heart once they know they can trust them. It might take a while, but once their loved ones has earned a place within their protective space, they will realize the great lengths that eights are willing to go for them. Yeah. They're going to stand up for you. They're going to go to bat for you. They're going to work hard for you. You know. But they got to make sure that you're there. They got to know that you're there. That you're not going to flake on them. That I'm being vulnerable. And you're just somebody that's just going to run at the first sign of discomfort. So that's the type eights. This has been the body types. I got something special planned for the next couple of weeks. I appreciate y'all um, rocking with us during this series. And... We're going to bring some guests on. I think it's about time to do that. And uh, we're going to have some fun. You know, um, I kind of wanted to talk about why I got into podcasting. But I'll do that maybe in the next couple of weeks. So this is Total Confidence Podcast. I'm your host, Amar Lazia. Thank you for listening.